first we start with a look back. When it left his hand, you just you just knew it. It looked good all the way to me. I don't know what he'll tell you, but it looked good all the way to me, and I almost started moonwalking. Uh, the atmosphere was crazy, so uh, just celebrating. I think I said we out. <laughs> The morning of this first day in April started in Dallas with a shoot around and something of a celebration. As everybody knows, today is Coach Jackson's birthday, so we put a little surprise together for him. Uh, had these shirts made up, hung them on all the hotel room doors. So when guys got down to the bus for shoot around, coaches on the bus, everybody walked on with that happy birthday Coach Jackson shirt. Just a just a little something for his birthday. Uh, and it was, you know, worked out great. By game time, the focus was intense on the task at hand. The Mavericks took a sizable lead into halftime, but the Warriors would respond in the second half. Big shot after big shot in this back and forth game where regulation wasn't enough. And in overtime, the Warriors again, with their backs against the wall, found a way to respond and pull out the victory in Dallas. This is late in the year, and I've seen teams say is how easy it is to let go of the rope. Um, and this is a team that's not going to do it. Contrary to anything, we're not going to do it. And uh, this is just a quality win against a, a team that had everything going their way. And I'm just proud of these guys. Uh, if you don't leave that game as a coach, as a player, drained, and something's wrong with you, just a big time win. The very next night offered quite a different story, though, as the Spurs seized victory in San Antonio. And as the Warriors looked for some positive signs to bring home, solid bench production stood out. Yet with three consecutive games at Oracle beckoning, keeping focus would be key. In doing so throughout the season, the Warriors have relied on veteran voices to cut through the chatter, none ringing out more poignantly than that of 18-year vet Jermaine O'Neal, who during the Texas trip made several points and a few pleas that would be reiterated in the days to follow. You know, I've never, I've never seen, you know, even in your, even in your own town, um, so much adversity and so much negativity uh, around a team that's really striving to be uh, to do special things, and uh, it, it baffles you a little bit. But you know, it, it says a lot about our head coach and our staff and our organization to really uh, support us and. Um, keep us with you know, open arms and says a lot about these guys in this locker room uh, who are, who's not willing to let you know negativity tear us apart I would uh, highly recommend that you know we cherish you know special uh, teams and um, injuries you know changes with the team can derail a lot of things so I, you know just personally because I've experienced it enjoyed us and the negativity that's out there in our home city you know, this asks for you know people to hold their evaluation to the end of the year when the season's over with. We're going down the stretch run where we need all our fans. We need all our fans to come in and, and be the great fans that they are, the great fans that they've been. We're fighting for ourselves, we're fighting for our coach, we're fighting for our city, we're fighting for our organization. So that's what it is. Division foes, the Sacramento Kings, were up next and looking for a battle. Warriors ground responding and bringing the noise and support that goes right along with the offensive barrage the Warriors delivered. In the game, Klay Thompson and Stephen Curry becoming the first pair of teammates to each hit over 200 three-pointers in back-to-back -back seasons. The Warriors led by as much as 42 points in the game, holding the Kings to 18% shooting in the first half. The second half, not much better for Sacramento, a 102-69 route. The first of two consecutive big nights at Oracle with the Warriors sweeping the season series with Sacramento. It was a real big win for us coming off that loss in San Antonio. We had to come back home and bounce back, so it feels good to win at home like this. And it should certainly be noted that the win over the Kings marked the first time in franchise history that the Warriors won each and every game at home against Pacific Division foes. You know, to go undefeated at home in the division is great. And also, you know, to get a win like tonight, you know, against a team with, you know, some very good players on that team, you know, they can get it going. And they get it going, you got a problem on your hand. You know, it's a great win for us. 
The Warriors' next opponent at Oracle, the Utah Jazz, suffering much of the same fate as the Kings. An onslaught of points early from the Warriors didn't stop until there was a season-high 130 points on the board in a win that saw 33 of that from Thompson and 31 from Curry as Steph had a double-double by the half, finishing with a career-high tying 16 assists. A blistering box score and what resulted in a franchise-first season sweep of the Jazz. Yeah, our offense was, was clicking and getting shots, but uh, for the rate we were scoring, we were playing pretty solid defense as well, and, and that was fueling our offense and getting us uh, good and good looks on, uh, on certain possessions. So, you know, great win. Uh, continue to take care of home court and, and uh, get this nice three-day break and get ready for Thursday. Next up, a look inside the Warriors team photo day as NBA legends are now showing up in the Bay Area to challenge Warriors stars like Stephen Curry off the court. This is three weeks in April, the Warriors run to the 2014 NBA playoffs.